I will not, I will not be silent, and I will always worship you. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. So as we embark upon the Gregorian calendar created by Pope Gregory and the Vatican and the Catholic Church and the Jesuits and, <laughs> and all of the people, I am thinking about God's calendar. And as I begin to study, once again, to reinvest time into going over the scriptures again about where does the Bible say that the year begins in fall because people like to say that the, the year begins in the autumn which is just simply not biblical. The year begins in the month of Abib, which is now called Nisan for some reason. I don't know. That could have something to do with the rabbinical Jewish Talmudic thing all over again. Nevertheless, it was called Abib, which means ripening, which is why you see things grow and begin to ripen in the spring. And so um, the only thing, once again, that I can see is that the land was supposed to rest every seven years. And Israel did not do that. And so because of that, Israel was punished. And this is spoken of in the book of Jeremiah. Um, chapter 29, it's spoken of. Um, Leviticus chapter 25, it speaks about the Jubilee year. Where every 49 years you let the land rest. Because you're supposed to let the, let the land rest every seven years. And then on the 49th year, you let the land rest. The 50th year is the year of Jubilee. The servants and everybody can go home to their families. I don't know if that's permanent just for the weekend, the year, whatever the case may be. Um, hallelujah. And so then what you would have is that would be the, the, the 50th year, the Jubilee year. After 49 years, okay, we're going crossing over from 49 into 50. We're celebrating. We're letting the servants go home. But And you are to, to do that as well as the normal things that you would do every seven year, which is let the land rest. Now, Israel was disobedient, which is very odd because the reality is God specifically said in his word in Leviticus chapter 25, I believe that's verse 18, that he was going to allow you to have three years worth of food in the sixth year and you would be able to eat that food through all the way through the ninth year. But you have to understand that <laughs> the ninth year is already a part of the next cycle. The, 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 the eighth year is already part of the next cycle. That eighth year was the beginning of a new cycle, so eight was considered one. So it was considered to be a, a, a number that reflects um, a, 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 a renewal, a new beginning. Same with from the 49th into the 50th. So 50 being a jubilee year, jubilee being celebration. So you can, so they would, so we attached a, a celebration and jubilation to the number 50. Now, see, things get out of hand when you start trying to give meaning to all the numbers. And then you start getting into angel numbers and all this divination and all this Babylonian stuff. You see, you start getting into divination and things like that. And this is not what God um, plans for us. Amen. And so, but 50, because biblically you can see that was, it was a time of jubilation, a time of celebration. And also eight being a new beginning because after the seventh year, you go into a new cycle. So if he's going to give you three times what you need in the year six, why would you complain in year seven? Why would you refuse to let the land rest when you're going to have more than enough? You're going to have triple you're going to have triple and you're going to actually have more than triple because, again, year eight and year nine, the food would last until then. But you are allowed to even eat that, which will grow in year eight and grew nine and grow in year eight and year nine. You just cannot eat what grows in year seven. And as a matter of fact, that's not even true because all he said was don't do no work. Don't cut nothing down. Don't uproot nothing. Leave it as it is. But if it grows, you can eat it. You can pick off some apples and some grapes, but you can't be cutting down the stuff and trying to sell it and trying to just leave it as it is. It's going to grow in and of itself. And you was allowed to just pick from that which grows. And it's supposed to be for you, for your servants, for your family, for people visiting your country. And we also see that that concept again when it speaks about the um, the the. Um, you know, the, 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 the poor people and the oppressed and allowing them to have something where they can glean, glean in your, in, in, glean in your, in, in, in your vineyard. So this is talking about uh, Leviticus chapter 19, where it says, leave something for the poor. There's somewhere I believe in uh, that may be Deuteronomy where it talks about taking care of the foreigners that are in your country. I was all for 
sending the foreigners away from this country until I read that verse. And I said, oops, sorry, Donald Trump. <laughs> the Bible says to take care of the people that are even in your country. But see, when the people are pretending to be Mexicans, but they're really Pakistanis, when they're really, when they're really terrorists, when they're, when they're really Russian spies and Chinese spies and they're coming across the Mexican border, that's a whole other thing. But America's time is almost done, and so we're going to get there. But let's go back. You let them glean in your vineyards. That was perfectly allowed. It was perfectly allowed for you to let the people glean. In year seven, you can also have food for, for the visitors, your servants, your family, for everyone. Make sure the poor is okay. Don't oppress the poor. Don't, don't cheat people out of their money. That was You had the things that was older was worth more value. It says the value would increase with the amount of years and it would decrease with the amount of years, which doesn't seem to work for produce, but I guess for antique furniture or something, maybe. But I'm thinking produce, how can it be worth more if it's older? I don't understand everything I have what God has given me. And what he's given me today is The ability to try and help people to understand <laughs> where we are, where we're going, and where we've been in relation to uh, uh, mm, mm, history, culture, time. And so when you talk about Leviticus 19 and Leviticus 25 and even the book of Jeremiah, I believe that's chapter 29, um, where it just they disobeyed, which makes no sense because the land, all you had to do was let it rest for one year and you was able to even, you know, pick the grapes because it's going to grow. Don't cut everything down. But some things like, you know, apple trees, pomegranates, you can pick off the tree and eat that. That's okay. But don't be trying to, like, cut down the tree and, like, okay, now we're going to, like, uproot all the watermelon. No. No, 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 no. Just don't do that. And it's no excuse because you've got triple the amount of food. So it's enough food for you, your servants, the visitors, the people, the poor are allowed to glean normally. And, and, and that's still considered gleaning because you're not like uprooting the watermelon, but you're going, okay, I'm taking a watermelon. See, greed, 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 greed. People are greedy and selfish and prideful. Help us, Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To, as we approach the real beginning of the year in March, that we will not be greedy and selfish and prideful and sinful. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The lust of the eye, the lust of the fresh flesh, and the pride of life. Deliver us, Father. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so... You had plenty, but still refused to let the land rest. Although you had so much, it was going to last you through that year and the other two years. So that triple that was going to last you through, through, through year seven, eight, and nine, understand that you're going to, in other words, what you eat, if you don't be greedy, you will still have two years worth of food coming year eight. But because you're going to still grow food in year eight that you can pluck up, you're going to have, in, you, you basically end up having, <laughs> oh my God, you have food for year seven, then you have double food for year eight, and then double food for year nine, if you manage it correctly and just don't be greedy. But if you want to be, just go ahead and eat all of the food, three years worth of food in year seven, okay, you actually could do that too. Because in year eight and year nine, you're going to have more once you start growing and reaping and sowing more. But to me, logically, it would make more sense if you just don't be greedy. Eat a normal year's supply and thank God that you didn't even have to work for it. And you still can let the poor people glean and you can pick the grapes and pick the pomegranates and pick the dates. But you just cannot, you cannot reap because the word reap means to cut. So you're not supposed to cut stuff down, but you can pick. So you can pick, but you can't cut. And that's okay because you still got triple the amount. So it's way more than enough. So that even if you chose to just humble yourself and don't do too much, that next year coming when you, when you are able to grow and reap and sow, you still have stuff left over from year six. You would still have left over from year six. That's why he said that that food is supposed to last you all the way to year nine. So he's saying, so thank you, Holy Spirit, because he's saying right now, actually, no, don't eat it all. Because it says in the Bible specifically, it's supposed to last you to year nine. So just eat some. And you're going to have the same amount that you would need in year seven. And then in year eight, you would have double. In year nine, you would have double. They didn't listen. They got kicked out of the land. Jeremiah told them, because for those 490 years, you did not let the land rest, you now are going into Babylon for 70 years. And when the time for Babylon to be over is over, then I will gather you back to this land. I will gather you back to Israel. So when you talk about God knowing the plans that he has for you in verse 11 of chapter 29 of the book of Jeremiah, don't forget that those plans include us going back to Israel. God bless you.